Parametric offset machining is a strategy that is not very commonly used, possibly because the results you can get from this strategy can be poor uh, and the quality of toolpath can be very poor at times. But with a little care and attention and understanding of how this strategy works, it can give you a much superior toolpath uh, for high speed machining than conventional machining methods such as 3D offset or constant Z. Parametric offset works on two patterns, a start and an end pattern, and the toolpath will be created between those two patterns. So the first thing we must do before we actually create the toolpath is to create the patterns. Now in this example we're going to be machining the purple outer split surface. So we need to create patterns from the edge of the split surface. The easiest way to do this is to use a selected surface boundary. But when we're creating this boundary we want to make sure that the boundary does not touch the, that we want to make sure that the tool does not touch the upstanding bosses in the center of the part. So to make sure that doesn't happen we're going to be using the component thickness and set these surfaces to be collision checked with an added thickness to keep the tool away from those surfaces. So we simply select the split surfaces, apply our selected surface boundary, and you can see the resultant boundary is created. Now, to get the best result from parametric offset machining, the patterns that we use need to be as smooth as possible because the toolpath is created uh, blending from the inside and outside pattern. So any imperfections in the patterns will be reproduced in the toolpath. So here in this example we're going around the boundaries, removing any spikes or lumps in the boundary to make the boundary as smooth as possible. Once the boundary is complete, then we can create our patterns from this boundary, which we can then enter into the parametric offset machining form. Now, for parametric offset machining to work, both the patterns need to be going in the same direction. So if we instrument the patterns and we see that one of the arrows is going the opposite way then we can simply reverse that selected segment to make sure the arrows are pointing in the same direction. Now because we edited this boundary, this selected surface boundary, the actual boundary is now in the wrong position and you can see that it's actually dropped below the surface. So to get the boundary back into the pattern into the correct position we need to drop the pattern down. When we drop the pattern back down onto the surface that takes into consideration the tool geometry. So that boundary will be in tool tip, sorry that pattern will be in tool tip position. So now we specify the start and the end patterns and what position the patterns are in. In our case, as I've said before, the patterns are in the tool tip position because they were created from the selected surface boundary. Now Power Mill will create a toolpath that blends seamlessly from the outside pattern to the inside pattern. 
and there we can see the benefit of this is that we have no breakup of the toolpath or fragmentation and we have fewer changes in direction compared to if we were using 3D offset machining. So under the right circumstances and with a little care and attention parametric offset can give us an ideal toolpath.